Now joining us at 10:45 as a replacement for Doug Williams, Grambling State defensive coordinator, Dennis Winston. Now joins us on the call. Coach, are you with us? Uh, yes, I am. Good morning, Coach. If you could open it up with a statement and uh, talk about your game against Louisiana Monroe, and also, if you will, uh, talk about your preparations for Lincoln, Missouri, coming up this Saturday for 4.30 p.m. kickoff. Uh, what I think our uh, game against uh, Louisiana Monroe was a game that, you know, that we had to play that a uh, game that was scheduled uh, basically before Coach Williams arrived. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, we had to play it, and, uh, you know, we came out uh, with with very few injuries. You know, that's a game you don't want to, before going into conference play, play teams like that because of the fact that you could have some serious injuries to uh, a starting player, and then after that you kind of drop off after that. All right, Coach, if you could talk about traveling to uh, Kansas City. And, of course, you got an 0-2 star right now, 0-1 in conference play. How tough is this trip for you guys logistic-wise? Well, I, I think what we're going to do, you know, this is a, this is a game that that we, we've we got, we got to have. It's a game that we're going to prepare for uh, with, with the guys that we do have. And we're going to go in there. Uh, it's, the, it's called, I think, the Missouri Classic. Uh, we're going to let the uh, Kansas City alumni uh, let's put it in this on. And you know, the thing about about Lincoln is that they're a team that they're going to pass the football. You know, they're a spread football team, which most football teams are now. Uh, they're going to get the ball out quick. They're going to do things to uh, get the ball in. In uh, certain people's hands, out in space, and uh, they're going to try to make some plays. We're talking with Grambling State defensive coordinator Dennis Winston, and we're taking questions for Coach Winston now. Coach, you were able. Uh, you guys uh, responded from ULM's uh, first drive with with your own score. Uh, talk about it after that 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 offensive series, and w did they change anything up defensively uh, to whereas you guys couldn't couldn't punch in a, a, another score in? Talk a little about um, the game after responding uh, to their touchdown. Well, well, I think our defense got up uh, right after our offense scored. Uh, you know, they took the ball right down and scored. Then our offense took it right back down and scored. Uh, and then our defense stopped them three and out. And uh, I think after that play, uh, you know, we had a, a, a young man ejected from the football game. So, you know, a few things happened in, in that series that, that you know, that kind of turned things around a little bit. With the play of uh, with Cedric Skinner, uh, of course, rushing for over 100 yards uh, last week, um, has the offense moved to a, a more of a, a run-oriented offense, or perhaps opening up the the passing game as a result of the success of the of the run? Well, well, I think with Skinner running for for the yards that he he ran for, it's now definitely going to open up uh, our passing game. You know, uh, what we're going to be able to now spread the field and do some things different and get the ball in uh, Skinner's hands where, you know, where he can uh, possibly run for over 1,000 this year. But the thing is, you have to have a running game in order to have a passing game. And I think that's what we've, uh, we're have we doing right now and we're getting to. Coach, I see Morrell, Pine Bluff Commercial. Um, can, can you kind of grade your defense a, a, a little bit after the first couple of ball games, a, a sense of uh, where your defense is and, and how they're performing? Well, I, well, I think, you know, uh, 
you know, you have to look at uh, the uh, the scores and everything. Uh, a lot of lot of, a lot of times they look at defense, and you know, there's a lot of points on the board. But a lot of people don't realize in the first game we had uh, 11 three and outs, uh, and then the uh, and they scored 23 points on us. Uh, the thing is, you know, in that game there also was a was a safety scored, you know, and uh, they kicked certain they kicked uh, I think two field goals, but this game here, they, you know, they kicked uh, what four field goals. Uh, you know, we had two interceptions. One was called back. You know, uh, a lot of times when you play different teams like that, uh, certain things gonna go in a different direction, especially at their home field. And, uh, you know, they're going to get the calls that they get. So, you know, we just have to play through that. Gotcha. Thank you. Hey, Coach, good morning. This is Charles Edmond from WPRL. How you doing, Charles? Doing pretty good. Coach, uh, with the new rules instituted in terms of hits and ejections, Uh, talk a little bit about how that impacts how you coach your your uh, football team and the aggression and being careful about being uh, not being ejected because you'll have to miss a little bit of time when that happens. Well, what happened is in this I know in the game that we just played ULM, the, you know they didn't eject one of our players, but you know that was a high hit on the quarterback. Uh, and they just said it was a late hit, but the thing about it was he he hit him high and he hit him in the chest. That was the difference in hitting you know helmet to helmet. Uh, we're not kind of teaching guys to tackle just a little different uh, by trying to go through the body uh, rather than going you know high because usually when you go high you're gonna go helmet to helmet, and uh, if not you're just gonna be using just a shoulder blow and you know we. We'd like to be able to tackle through uh, the player and get him on the ground. Coach Ty Miller from Sheridan Broadcasting. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Ty. Uh, Coach, when you take out Lincoln this weekend, huh, and, and they are, for all intents and purposes, maybe not the caliber of team that is on Grambling's level, what are you looking for from your team in this game? Well, you know, I, I I've looked at uh, Lincoln and they they they're playing Lindenwood. Lindenwood's a pretty good football team, and uh, they stayed right in the game with them. I think Lindenwood was what 11 and 0 last year, or 10 and 1, and uh, they stayed right in the game with them. They have some some, some transfers. They have some junior college players. Uh, they're a pretty good football team. We, you know, we got to go in there and not take them for granted and. You know, we got to go in right off the bat doing what we do best, and uh, that's giving the ball to our running back, see, you know, with our big offensive lineman, uh, see if we can just punch the ball in. And finally, Coach, how much improvement did you see from your team, did you and see from the team from the first week into the second week? Well, uh, we saw, we saw uh, a great amount because of the fact that our kids went in, in went into this game uh, with confidence. They went into this game wanting to win this game uh, because it was, you know, the vicinity of the uh, the schools. Um, I think our kids went in went into this game motivated to play because uh, they they wanted a win against a big team. You know, it just didn't happen this time. Any more coach for defensive coordinator at Grambling State, Dennis Winston. Coach, we appreciate you filling in for Doug Williams, and we wish you the very best on the road in Missouri uh, this coming weekend. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Coach.